Now, another way of looking at this is to um, use electrolysis. Here are a pair of electrodes, and what we're going to do is pass a current, a mains current, between these electrodes within the water. And uh, if we just place the electrodes within the water here and turn it on, the first thing you'll see is a lot of gases being produced in the tap water and virtually nothing happening in the reverse osmosis water. Now these gases are hydrogen and oxygen, the primary components of water. We still look at the reverse osmosis, there's very little reaction occurring here at all. And of course what we're starting to see is a big color change occurring in the tap water as well. We're also seeing a lot of heat being generated. Now the big difference here is everyone assumes water is a good conductor of electricity. It isn't actually. Um, the primary difference is that the water is being conducted in the tap water through all the dissolved solids within it and that's why we're getting a very strong reaction. The color change is caused by the precipitation of the mineral salts and the metals um, within the water and you'll see again on the reverse osmosis water virtually no color change. The color change is uh, very obvious now. The heat generated as well um, is, is quite clear. If I touch this, it's, it's now very hot. Now, what we're seeing here is, is a range of minerals and, and metals. Um, it includes a, a range of salts, um, sodium salts, calcium salts, mal magnesium, zinc. But in addition, um, from independent uh, analysis, we know that there are a lot of metals that are actually not so good for our health at all. Um, they include aluminium, um, barium, lead, um, there is some iron obviously. Um, so there's good and bad and uh, the real issue here is that the reverse osmosis system is able to take virtually everything out of it.